Even if you don't pay much attention to cruising, it's likely that you have heard of Virgin Voyages. That's because the cruise line made a splash not only with ships that look like nothing else at sea, but by offering a completely different way of cruising. Adults only, with things such as tips and Wi-Fi already included, no buffet, and all the food being free, there is a lot to like about Sailing Virgin. That's simply not the same as with other lines. Now, I just got back from my first ever cruise with Virgin Voyages, and here's what I wish I knew and what you'll want to know before you sail. First thing that you might notice is that there's a lot missing from a traditional cruise when you sail on Virgin Voyages. Personally, I love these changes, but they will not be for everyone. Let's start with the cruise director. There isn't one, so there isn't someone coming over the PA to tell you what's happening around the ship. In fact, there are almost no announcements at all outside of telling people to check in at their muster station at the start of the cruise. Some of the fun, but frankly sort of tacky events like the world's sexiest man contest by the pool, they aren't part of the lineup. The buffet is now a food hall with a number of stations that serve you as you order, although many items are pre-made. There's not a main dining room, but instead a number of different restaurants of which all are included in your cruise fare. Art auctions? Nope, you will not see those on Virgin, nor do they have the photo stands set up when boarding or photographers around the ship. When you hear adults only, your first thought might be, oh, that means I can relax without kids running around. That is true, but in my experience, the advantage of being adults only was something completely different. What I found in Sailing Virgin is that with no kids, everything can instead revolve around what adults want instead of having to factor in families or children. The performances can be more risque. In the restaurants, the food can be more unique and cater to adult tastes. Even the amenities on the ship can cater to adults instead of having to factor in families. I'm talking about things like a tattoo parlor on board. In the beach club, it's able to cater to adult tastes rather than having all sorts of kid-friendly things to do. So if you sail, don't think that having no kids on board just means that you won't have to deal with children cutting up or babies crying. The impact is much bigger than that. Of course, Virgin's signature color is red, and you'll want to match it on your cruise by bringing some red clothing of your own. During your trip, Virgin hosts Scarlet Night. Now, most lines will have a themed event, usually on the pool deck during the cruise, like a neon party or a 70s disco party. Virgin Voyage's answer is Scarlet Night. Here, all the passengers dress up in red and the theme runs throughout the entire ship. There's an entire fictional backstory to the night that I won't get into, but it involves an octopus. So you'll find inflatable octopus tentacles and all the lighting is given a red hue. Meanwhile, performers put on impromptu shows around the ship, adding to the atmosphere. What you don't want to do is to be like me and not pack anything red and feel a bit left out of the fun. One big change you might notice is that there's no formal night on the cruise. The closest thing is Scarlet Night when people seem to dress up a little in their best red, but the traditional formal night of a cruise is one thing that Virgin has given the axe. In fact, the dress code on the ship is, well, it's non-existent. As long as you're not wearing a bathing suit into a restaurant, you're fine. But remember that it is also adults only and given the type of passenger who sails, people still do dress up a bit when headed to dinner. It's common to see men wearing a nice shirt and pants and women dressed up in a cute dress. Tuxedos and evening gowns though, Nope, they're not there, but everyone is still very presentable and dressed nicely. Now, I'll be honest, it took me a while to sail a Virgin Cruise because the marketing showed lots of hip and trendy people. I am, uh, I'm not that. I don't have a mustache or ironic tattoos. I don't eat avocado toast, so I just thought I wouldn't really fit in. The truth is, that's not the case at all. There are all sorts of people on the ship, young, old, black, white, beautiful, and not so beautiful, gay, straight. It was a very inclusive crowd, but everyone was friendly as you'd expect on a regular cruise. I will say that the crowd is a bit different, however. I've sailed a lot of different lines from Carnival to Royal Caribbean. 
MSC, Princess, Norwegian, you name it. What I noticed is that the Virgin crowd seemed to trend a bit younger and a bit more fashionable overall than those other lines. But trust me, you do not have to have a starring role in Hollywood or be an Instagram model to fit in. One major thing I noticed on the cruise line is all the little things that Virgin does that make you feel like a guest and an adult instead of a customer or a teenager. For instance, if you want a beach towel, there's no process of checking them out and then having to return them like you do on other cruises or risk being charged. You simply grab a beach towel. They aren't worried about you stealing them. When you enter the cabin, there's a carafe of water, so you have something to drink in the room, and there's another carafe in the fridge. You don't have to order bottles of water or drink from the bathroom tap. Board games aren't just a few cheap decks of cards and a checkerboard. There are tons of games available, even those that come with a lot of pieces, and instead of some soft serve mix, there's legit ice cream and waffle cones. Again, it's all small items, but they really do add up to make a difference. On Virgin, the app is going to be a major part of your cruise, particularly when it comes to securing your spot at shows and the sit-down restaurants. The sit-down restaurants and some entertainment, they ask for a reservation, but one thing I wish I knew was how quickly these spots fill up. By the time that I boarded the cruise, reservations at the restaurants were all full for the entire trip. And with relatively small theaters on board, I had to wait until the second or the third showing of some performances before I could find an open spot. So one of the best things you can do is take time before you board and book everything that you want to eat or see. However, if you don't get a reservation, do not despair. At least for the restaurants, Virgin says that they hold some spots for walk-ins. In fact, I went to two different restaurants during my cruise that had no reservations available to see if I could even eat anywhere. One spot was nearly empty. The other was more full, but still had plenty of space available. So I was seated both times with zero issues. Let's talk a little bit about space on the ship. I sailed Scarlet Lady, but the ships in the fleet are identical, so it should apply across the board. Overall, I found that there was lots of elbow room around the ship. While the reservation system did fill up quickly, there weren't a lot of overly crowded spaces when you sailed. There were always spots where you could get away and largely be on your own if you wanted, compared to some mega ships that can feel frankly cramped when they're full. That was not the case here. But the one spot that can feel cramped is also pretty important, the pool areas. During my cruise, I figured there were only about 200 spots to sit around the main pool. That's less than 10% of the ship's capacity. On a day at sea that was cloudy and overcast, the interior spaces of the ship were buzzing with activity and people, but the pool deck was also full with all the loungers being claimed. I can only imagine what it would look like on a typical day at sea when the sun is out and shining. Anyone who has cruised knows that navigating cabin hallways, frankly, it can be confusing. All the rooms look the same and with no windows, you can't tell which way you're headed, forward or aft. On Virgin, there are signs showing the forward way that can help you get where you're headed. You should know that instead of port and starboard, the line uses A for one side of the ship and Z for the other, and M for cabins in the middle. So if your room is 11334A, that is different than 11334Z, which is on the other side of the ship. So you have to pay attention to the entire cabin number, including that letter at the end of it, or you'll end up trying to get into someone else's room. Stairwells can also help you get around. Each one, aft, middle, and forward, they have different colored carpet of blue, red, and purple, so that you can know where on the ship you are when walking around inside. If you sail from Miami on Virgin, then one stop you'll have is the Beach Club. Unlike many lines, Virgin Voyages, they don't have their own private island. Instead, it has its own private carve out on Bimini. You'll take a free shuttle from the ship over to the Beach Club. There, you'll find a spot that's a bit more bohemian in style than some other cruise line islands. There's a large pool that runs through the middle and the other side of that are rows of chairs lining a white sand beach with some of the most electric blue water you've ever seen. 
I think you can really consider the day at the beach club to be two different days. In the morning, it's calm and peaceful, almost meditative-like. There's some music playing, but the crowds are thinner and it's much more about relaxing. After lunch, however, the place fills in and the party cranks up with a DJ playing, inflatables put into the pool and the staff leading the party as they dance to the music. Now, you can find quieter spots on the other side of the pool or on the beach, but if you're wanting the more wild time, this is it. One way that cruise lines get repeat customers is with their loyalty programs. That can be a big hurdle for passengers trying a new line like Virgin Voyages. But if you're someone who is interested in sailing the line, but you've already got high status with another cruise company, you are in luck. Virgin will offer you status on their line based on your status with another line if you are at high enough of a level. For example, Royal Caribbean Diamond members and above can see a match on Virgin, even if it is their first cruise with the line. What that can get you is a number of great perks, including premium Wi-Fi, $10 a day in coffee credit, and a $100 bar tab credit plus more. Not many people know about it, including me, until I actually sailed. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you learned a little bit about Sailing Virgin that, frankly, I didn't know before I did. Now, if you like this video, I hope you'll like and subscribe. You can always find more on Sailing Virgin and any other cruise line on cruisely.com. Until next time, happy sailing.